nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. High and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no. Than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. You ought to go ahead and rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Kelly Jackson. We want to welcome you to our worship service on this morning at For the Kingdom Christian Church, where our mission is the commission. And we thank God for all of you uh, that have joined us for worship on this morning, that have joined us each and every Sunday. Again, we tell you all the time, we do not take it for granted. Uh, we do understand that people belong to other churches, but we also thank God for those that take the time out to share in worship with us on each and every Sunday morning. Again, we are so uh, eternally blessed and we are eternally grateful uh, for you all tuning in and sharing with us uh, in worship as we are still in the launching phase of this church. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a few announcements as we always do, and then I'm going to get out the way. Lady Jackson's going to come back uh, with another selection, and then we'll go to the word on today. But as always, we invite you to connect with us, connect with us on Facebook and on Instagram, FTK Church in both those places. Again, Facebook and Instagram, we invite you to connect with us uh, if you have not done so already. Again, make sure that you uh, hit that like and follow button on Facebook and then go over to Instagram and hit that follow button. And we would definitely appreciate uh, you for doing so. And then invite somebody to like and follow our, our pages on Facebook and Instagram if you don't mind. And share the word. Again, even if they belong to another church, uh, the word is universal. Amen. And so uh, you can never get enough word. I just believe that. Amen. We also invite you uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our YouTube channel for the Kingdom Christian Church over on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so that you know when videos are popping up over there. And I keep warning you every week and we're working on some things behind the scene. There's going to be some stuff that we do exclusively on YouTube. So you want to be a part of that YouTube uh, subscribe list as well. So hit that subscribe button over on YouTube. And always, as always, we invite you to like, comment, and share wherever you're following us. Like, comment, and share. We want your feedback. We want to hear your amens. We want to feel your encouragement. So don't just watch us. Make sure that you like and comment and encourage us as we go about uh, doing kingdom work. 
If you want to contact us, you can uh, shoot us a call or, or shoot us a text, rather, give us a call. Church phone number 313-570-0782. Again, 313-570-0782. You can give us a call, shoot us a text. You can also email us, ftkchurch at gmail.com. Send us an email, and however you contact us, we will respond to you. Uh, we won't just leave it hanging out there, amen. We won't leave you on red, as the young people used to say, amen. Uh, so if you give us a text or you give us an email, uh, we will definitely respond to you in that regard. Listen, we want to say thank you once again for all of you that have sown financially into this ministry. Again, we do not take it for granted. We appreciate everybody that sows a seed into this ministry, and we pray that God will return it to you 100-fold. So we thank God for all of you that have thought it not robbery to sow into this ministry, to sow a seed into what we are doing. If you want to support us in the ministry of giving, you can do so at Givelify. Search us out for the Kingdom Christian Church on Givelify. There you will see my face, Pastor Kelly Jackson. You can sow uh, into this ministry via Givelify. You can also sow into this ministry via Cash App, dollar sign FTK Church. If you want to uh, send us a Cash App donation, you can do that again, dollar sign FTK Church. If you would like to mail us a donation, you can send us a donation via the mail. For the Kingdom Christian Church, P.O. Box 230, East Point, Michigan, 48021. One more time, P.O. Box 230, East Point, Michigan, 48021. However you want to bless us, and we always tell you this, uh, if you need me to come and pick up a seed, you give Pastor Jackson a call. I do not mind driving. Give me a call, and as we like to tell you each and every week, however you want to bless us, we will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. want to encourage you, meet us for Bible class every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Kingdom Connection Bible class on the Zoom platform. Again, we're there every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We're having a good time in the Lord. Uh, we're still in the book of James. We're almost done. But even when we come out of that, we're going somewhere else in Jesus' name. But we encourage you, put us on your schedule every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Join us for Kingdom Connection Bible class on Zoom. Information's on the screen for you there. Again, come on and join us virtually. We're still virtual with Bible class, but we encourage you to join us each and every Tuesday. Listen, for those of you that are into podcasts, we encourage you uh, to, to subscribe to the Purpose and Beyond podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. And even if you don't listen to podcasts, again, if you're following the church page here, I share the podcast uh, every morning that is that is done. We do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I share the Monday and the Friday podcast on the church page. So we encourage you again. Uh, uh, we've been dealing in a series uh, for the last few weeks on our Monday morning discipleship called The Mark of a Disciple. And I guarantee you that will be a blessing to you. Again, if you're following the church page, all of those episodes are still there so you can go back and listen to those episodes right there on facebook or wherever you listen to your podcast we encourage you subscribe to the podcast so that you can get a an additional word from us we believe that it will be a blessing to you um listen if you'd like to support us by purchasing any of our written works go to the publishing website www.krjpublishing.com you can purchase any of our written works we'll talk about that in just a second but again we have 14 books there one of those books has got to be a blessing to you because I believe they all will be. But we understand that we're at a financial crunch right now. So one of those books is going to hit you in the right price point. I got books from $5 all the way up to $17. So again, go to the publishing website, www.krjpublishing.com. Support the ministry in that way, and we would definitely appreciate you for doing so. Listen, before we talk about the sermon series that we started on last week and we're going to be continuing this week, I want to encourage you. Uh, we launched our women's ministry on this past week. Uh, Lady Jackson was on Facebook Live, and that video is still up, by the way, right here on the church page. You can go back and watch that, but we are not waiting. We are not waiting for the building. We're not waiting for this, this or that. We're moving as God has told us to move, and we're putting our seed in the ground, and we're launching things right now. I'm just a firm believer that if you put things into practice, when God elevates you to the right place, you won't have to learn what to do when you get there if you're already doing it. And so check out the video again, Women Who Worship. That is the name of our women's ministry. Go and check out that video again. Now, I want you to do it after service. Don't do it right now. Amen, somebody. But uh, it's right here on this page. And you can watch that video anytime, just like any of the other videos that we put up. You can always go back and watch any of the videos at any time 
time. But again, I want you to go and check that out. Support Lady Jackson every second Tuesday of the month. Uh, she's going to be sharing in our women's ministry. Again, it's virtual now, but in a couple months, there are going to be some meetings. Amen. They're going to be meeting in some places. So uh, start with us now. Amen. So that when the time comes, you'll, you'll, you'll already be in the know and be in the loop when we start meeting in other places. Amen. Amen. Listen, I told you about that sermon series. We're going to continue on our sermon series on today based on the book Going Through to Get Through. You got to have faith. So, so today we're going to preach from that same uh, theme. You got to have faith. But listen, if you want to purchase a copy of that book, Go to this link right here that you see on the screen. That is a special link. It's not on the, the publishing website. This is a special link, and you can get that book at a discounted price, going through to get through, activating our faith during life's most trying times. And if there's ever a time that we need to have a conversation about faith, my brother and my sister, this is the season right now. I told you last week, this isn't the time for everybody to be preaching prosperity to you. Amen. Somebody, somebody needs to, to encourage you on today, amen, because sometimes the money ain't coming, but I tell you who is coming, God is coming, amen, and so we need a word of faith, and so we're going to continue on in that series on today, going through to get through, you got to have faith, and so I'm excited about what God is going to say to us on today. A couple more announcements, then I'm getting out the way. Uh, In-person service is coming. Amen. Amen. You all ought to clap right there in the comment section or clap wherever you're at. In-person service is coming first Sunday in April, April 3rd, 2022. In-person service is coming for the Kingdom Christian Church. We'll be gathering in person. And so you all are invited to come out and share with us, to come out and worship with us as we launch in-person service first Sunday in April, April 3rd, 2022. It's going to be at the East Point Palace where we're having our meet and greet. I'm going to tell you about that in just a second. Uh, 21555 Gratiot at the corner of Topher, East Point, Michigan, 4801, uh, 48021 rather. Again, 21555 Gratiot Avenue at the corner of Topher. That's in East Point, Michigan, 48021. That's where we're going to have our in-person worship service. Service is going to start at 10 a.m. And we're going to let everybody in at 945. We encourage you, my brother, my sister, please, please, please be on time. Again, we don't own this building, but we have been blessed with this space for a certain time in the morning. And it fits right in line with our normal worship. So we don't have to make any adjustments in that regard. But we can't linger, y'all. And we can't start late and all that stuff. We got to start on time so that we can move on out the way. Amen. God is blessed, but we don't want to take our blessing for granted, we want, want to do things decently and in order, and we will be requiring your mask on, but we'll talk to you more about that in the coming weeks as we get closer because we want it to be fresh in, fresh in your mind. But again, in-person service, April 3rd, 2022. Speaking of that meet and greet, meet and greet is Saturday, March 26, 2022. That way, if you, if you didn't come to the last meet and greet, you can come to this one, and you'll be able to see where we're going to have worship. That way, you won't get lost on Sunday morning, amen. But again, our last meet in Greek, Saturday, March 26, 2022. Again, same place, East Point Palace, 21555. Gratiot at the corner of Topher in East Point. That meet and greet is going to be again from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And some of you have probably already noticed, you saw it on my page, you saw it on Lady Jackson's page. Uh, we gonna have some dinners that day, amen. Uh, we're doing a little fundraiser, amen, for the church. I'm old school, y'all. I believe in doing fundraisers for the church, amen. And so uh, we're gonna be selling some dinners uh, in order to, to support the church, amen, in, in order to support what we're starting right now. Because again, we, we, we don't have 200, 300 members where we could just say, y'all pay your tithes and offering. Amen. So so we need to do some fundraisers right now. Amen. And so listen, even if you don't want to be a part of that, come on out and meet with Lady Jackson and myself again. Saturday, March 26, 2022 at the East Point Palace. Now, again, if you want some more information about those dinners, again, go to my page, go to Lady Jackson's page, and we'll probably post it right here on the, on the church's page as well so you can understand pricing and things like that and come out and support us and support us as we go about kingdom work amen amen that's all the announcement that we have I, I know we're doing church now because our announcement period is getting a little longer amen i know we're doing some church right now but here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna move on out the way lady jackson's gonna come back she's gonna give us another selection and when she's done with that we're gonna come back with the word of god
myself, I give myself away. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, come on. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. And uh, again, it's good to be with you all again on this morning. Share in this series uh, that we're that we're dealing in. And again, as I told you all in the announcement period before I pray here on today, um, this is the time that our faith needs to be increased. And uh, many of us, uh, we're seeing what's going on in the world. And uh, many of us are fighting our own personal battles. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that on today. But I just want to increase your faith on today. I want you to keep trusting in God. And I don't want you to lose your faith. And so it is nothing but the Lord that we wound up in the series in March dealing with faith. But let's let's not take up any more of your time. Let's go to the word. But let's pray before we do that. Pray with me if you don't mind. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, how we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to share a word with these, your people. Lord, I ask right now that you hide me behind the cross. Let them see all of you and none of me. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So uh, let's get to the word on this morning. I got two passages of scripture for you on this morning. They're both in the Old Testament collection of writings. Join me in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14 verses 1 through 4. Numbers chapter 14 verses 1 through 4. As we always do, I'm going to share that with you from the New Living Translation. The Word of God simply says this, Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt, or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt. Then they plotted among themselves, let us choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Head on over to the book of Psalms for me, if you don't mind. Psalms number 27. Psalms 27, verses 13 and 14. New Living Translation. Psalms 27, 13 and 14. It says this, yet I am confident. I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently 
for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. That is the word of God again from the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, and the 27th number of Psalms, verses 13 and 14. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and he certainly will bless the doers of his already blessed word. Again, y'all, for a subject on today, you got to have faith. This is part two. You got to have faith. And as we told you all, uh, we're taking uh, uh, notes, if you will, from our book, Going Through to Get Through, Activating Our Faith During Life's Most Trying Times. And so where we're going to be on this week in that particular book, I'm, I pulled a lot of things from chapter two of that book. And chapter two of that book talks about the challenge of God's timing, working your way through the wilderness. This particular chapter of going through to get through my brother and my sister, it deals with our patience with God. Now, this seems like something that should be an automatic when we consider just how patient God has been and is with us. Yeah, it would seem wrong, amen. It would seem wrong that we should have the audacity, amen, to be at our wit's end waiting on God to do something when God is so often waiting on us to get it together. As you see in the text that we've chosen and uh, 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 from the book of Numbers, amen, we see that in our impatience with God, we can sometimes have the desire to go back to captivity, amen, rather than endure with God. We might rather be in captivity. You saw that children of Israel say, I I'd rather be back in Egypt. Then do it with God. What kind of mindset? I want y'all to understand this question on this morning. What kind of mindset are we dealing with that sees bondage as comfort and being with God in an uncomfortable moment as bondage? I'm going to say it again so you can understand it. What kind of mindset are we dealing with when somebody sees bondage with their oppressor as comfort? but they see being in an uncomfortable position for a moment with God as bondage. Something wrong with that thinking that's in these moments, my brothers and my sisters, that we should have a mindset that we dig deeper into our faith instead of digging deeper into our doubt. This is why the Psalms 27 verses are so critical. In that 14th verse, uh, that, that heads to the second chapter of going through to get through, amen. It tells us to wait on the Lord. And to quote my dear mother, my dear mother, Annie Jackson Larris, my mother would always talk about this verse, and she would say, the Bible says, wait on the Lord. And then she says, God knows we weren't listening, so then God says, yet wait again. Mama said God repeated himself. I imagine, y'all, that this is repeated because God knows, amen, that we are impatient. God knows that once he begins a movement in our lives, we don't ever expect him to pause. We all believe that salvation puts us on the fast track. However, there are times where, where God will halt things, amen. There are times where God will put the brakes on some stuff. There are times when God will pause some things. And I want you to know this morning, child of God, he's not pacing himself, amen. He's pacing us. Amen, as, as, as God is, is, is pulling us out into the wilderness, amen, so that we can be prepared, amen, for what it is that we feel like we're ready for, amen. We're going to look around at some point. This is what that wilderness experience is like. We're going to look around at some point, and we're going to notice that our surroundings have changed. Yeah, you see these children of Israel, they, they've come out of bondage, and then they, they came through a place, and then God brought them across the Red Sea. And you look around at your surroundings, of change, amen. Some people are missing from your life sometimes when you go into a wilderness situation. Our support, amen, appears to be lacking, amen. And, 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 though, and though we feel as if we're heading in the right direction because God is in fact leading us, not only do we feel lost, amen, but folks are beginning to question whether or not we even know what we're doing. I'm preaching better than y'all responding on this morning. I know some people are looking at me saying, what is he doing? Amen. Make no mistake about it. My brothers and sisters, amen. Being in the wilderness has many questions. But here's the good news. God has all the answers. It is, in fact, in, in these moments, y'all, 
that God pulls us out into the wilderness. Amen. When he does that, he has desire to pull some things out of us. Amen. I'll say it again. It is that in these moments when God pulls us out into the wilderness, that he has desire to pull some things out of us. Amen. You've all heard me say this before, but it's worth repeating. Amen. Amen. When God pulled the children of Israel out of Egypt, amen, he did it in one night. But it took him 40 years to pull Egypt out of the children of Israel. Amen. What do you mean we say that, Pastor Jackson? Amen. God can change your situation overnight. God can pull you out of bondage overnight. God can pull you out of some things overnight. But it's going to take some time to pull those things, those habits, those ways Amen. Out of you. Amen. And so here it is, y'all. Here it is in their wandering, their, their doubt and their disobedience. Amen. God couldn't just elevate them just as they were. Amen. They had some stuff on them that would have collided with the promise. Amen. And so they had to spend some time in the wilderness space so that God could do his work. As you're sitting at home right now, and you're saying to yourself, Pastor, I'm in the wilderness right now. I feel lost right now, amen. I'm trying to break away from some people. I'm trying to break away from some stuff. I'm trying to get out of some habits, amen. I'm trying to get out of some, some ways right now. And, and I feel lost right now because now that I've stopped doing certain things, I don't have the friends I used to, amen. Now that I've stopped hanging around certain places, people don't even care nothing about me no more, amen. And I feel like I'm by myself, amen, amen. This is where your faith has got to kick in, amen, amen. This is why God will pull you off by yourself so he could do some work on it. But, 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 but here it is, y'all. Isn't that just like us, though? Isn't that just like us? God has called us up from the world into his promise. And we still have some ways like our oppressors, amen. We still have some habits and some ways that are contradiction to what God is calling us to. I'll say that again. We have some ways and some habits that are a contradiction to what God is calling us to. Don't let people fool you. On this morning, child of God, amen, you can't be any kind of way and serve God properly. I, I know new religion is telling you that, amen. I know new religion is telling you you ain't got to change that much, but I, I want you to hear, amen, right, right, right from here from Pastor Jackson, you can't be any kind of way and serve God. There's got to be some changes in your life. You can't be any kind of way. God says that he's holy, amen, so he requires holiness, out of his people, amen. Don't forsake your time in the wilderness. Have faith that God is simply preparing you for greater. Here's a major question as we hurry on through this sermon on this morning. I, I pray that you're getting something out of this. Here's a major, major question for our wilderness and our wandering with, with challenges our faith, amen. And I talked about the challenge of God's timing. Here's the wilderness question right here. How did I get here? How did I get here? What, 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 how did I wind up here, God? How did I wind up? You, I'm following you, God. Hey, man, you ever follow somebody, and, and, and then it seems like they know where they're going, and all of a sudden you're looking around and you say, this don't look right? I, I know we're we in those spaces right now where we're, we're stuck right now. We're in the wilderness. Again, we had to cut off some people. Hey, Amen. We had to cut off some things. You might even have to leave your church. Hey, Amen. You had to cut off some stuff, and then you look around and you say, how did we get here, God? You told me to do all this stuff. You told me to lead them people along. You told me to stop doing that, God. How did we get here, God? How did I get here? The strangest thing, my brother, my sister, about being in the wilderness is the fact that nobody, nobody plans to be there. Yeah, that's one of the strangest things about being in the wilderness. Them children of Israel thought they were on their way to freedom. Amen. And they didn't understand, like, how did we get here? How did we wind up here, Moses? Did you bring us out here to die. Consider those children of Israel, amen, and the fact that God has just delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh, amen, and he even brought them across the Red Sea on dry land. How is it then that we can be following a God that does such things, and yet we can still end up wandering and feel lost? Oh, that's the million-dollar question, y'all. How is it that I can be wandering in faith? I can be wandering and following because I was following God, and God said, go this way. And God said, turn left when I wanted to go straight, amen. And God said, turn right when I wanted to go left, amen. How is it that I, I was following God? I did what you told me to do, God. And why do I feel like I'm wandering? Why do I feel like I'm lost, God? Can I help you on today? Can I help you on today? Let me help you real quick here. In the context, amen, in this context, lost is a relative term. 
Oh, well, you mean to say that, Pastor Jackson, amen. We feel lost according to our human understanding. In your flesh, you're uncomfortable when you're walking in faith. In your flesh, you're, you're not used to where you are, amen, so you want to turn back, amen. According to your human understanding, you say, I've never been here before, therefore I am lost. But I want you to be clear on this morning, the only way that you really can be lost is to be unsaved. That's the only way that you can really be lost, amen, somebody. And, and so here it is, y'all. I, I don't want you to get confused about where you are right now, amen. The only way to be lost is to be unsaved. If you're God's child, you may not always know where he's led you or why he led you there, but as long as he's with you, you're never lost. Yeah, I, I may not know exactly where I am, amen. Even in the launching of this church, I, I, I'm, I'm into some uncharted territories right now. But I know that God is with me, and I know that as long as God is with me, I am not lost, amen. Now, it may seem like confusion to somebody else, amen. It may seem like I'm lost to somebody else. It may seem like I know what I'm doing to somebody. I don't rather know what I'm doing to somebody who's rooting against me. But as long as God is with me, I'm not lost. I'm reminded, y'all. The song we used to sing way back in the day in the church, Never Alone. The song said, he promised, he promised, he promised, he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Amen. So even if I feel lost, even if I feel confused, even if it feels like I'm going in circles, as long as God is with me, I know that I'll be all right. You got to have faith on this morning. You can begin, y'all, to answer the question of how did I get here by always understanding that God's direction and his directive are divine, amen. If God led you to a place, he's leading you to a purpose. I, I'll say it again. If God led you to a place, he's leading you to a purpose. And even if you look around and the place seems desolate and alone, amen, you'll find that God will sustain you day after day. You want to know how you got to a place of isolation for God's purposes? It's because God sent you there. Now that you're there, it's time to do some soul searching. Amen. So let's move on a little bit further. I want to share some more things with you from the book going through the get through. Amen. Amen. What am I waiting for? Now, now that you've come from that place where you say, how did I get here? How did I get here, God? Then you say, well, well now that I know why I'm here, what, what are we waiting on, God? What are we waiting on? This is usually what we're asking God while we're waiting. Now, let, let me give you a point of clarity here about this waiting thing, because part of the problem is, we're sitting around asking all these questions. How did I get here? What am I waiting for? You, you do understand that waiting on God means serving God. Amen. You should still be working. Amen. If you was busy working and serving God, you wouldn't have so much time to question God about what he's doing, about him doing God things. Amen. So you ought to be working and serving. Amen. Amen. So so sometimes we're saying, uh, uh, saying to God, is, what's the hold up, Lord? Why is this taking so long? Why am I still wandering, God? Why are we in the wilderness? That's what you hear that, that, that numbers text, amen. The children of Israel said, we've been, we've been at this a long time. We've been at this a very long time, Moses, and I'm tired of waiting on God, amen. Why did I deserve uh, this isolation when I thought we were headed for elevation? God, you told me that I was on my way to my promise. And I trusted you, God, and here we are. So, so what's taking so long? What am I waiting for? Well, well, I'm glad you asked that question on this morning, amen. I want you to consider these things, amen. Consider these things. Now, I want you to catch this in your spirit, child of God, because I'm going to throw it your way. Catch it in your spirit. Now, before checking God, we need to check ourselves. Oh, that's, that's it right there, amen. We've got a lot of questions for God. We don't have a lot of, a lot of questions for ourselves, amen. Amen, somebody. Before we check God, we need to check ourselves. Self-reflection, watch this, self-reflection should cause us to look within and find out just why God didn't take us around the wilderness. Instead, he took us through it. One more time. Self-reflection should cause us to look within and find out just why God didn't take us around the wilderness. Instead, he took us through the wilderness. Can I help y'all one more time on this morning? Everybody don't go through the wilderness. <laughs> I wish I had some help in here. I wish I had a church in here on this morning. Everybody don't go through the wilderness. Everybody don't experience this right, right here. You, you know why everybody don't experience this? I, I want you to hear me good, and I'm not telling you they don't experience anything, but everybody don't experience the wilderness. I'll tell you why they don't experience the wilderness, because some folks are just obedient. Some folks do exactly what God told them to do. There are people walking this face of the earth right now that do exactly what God tells them to do when God tells them to do it, and they don't ever experience this type of thing. 
Let me give you a little bit more background before I go a little bit further here. Again, I didn't outline this today, but it's outlined in the book. Listen, listen, scholars have determined that from the Red Sea to the Promised Land should have taken the children of Israel about three or four weeks. Instead, they wandered in circles for 40 years simply because of their disobedience and their doubt. Spent too much time complaining. Self-reflection will cause us to look within and say, why didn't you take me around, God? Why did you take me through? Amen. Well, well, let's talk about that a little bit further on the day. I don't want to run out of time on the day. God, watch this. God may have pointed us in a certain direction, but we didn't take the route that he chose for us. God may have told you to go a certain way, but you didn't go the way God told you. So you won't know what's taking so long. i tell you what's taking so long. It may take longer than we thought because we didn't go the way we were told to go. We may have had our own mind made up. I, I'm not operating in faith. God, you told me to go this way. This seems harder, God. Amen. So I'm going to go the way I think I should go. No, this is where faith kicks in and you say, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to go the way that you told me to go. Kathy, can I help you one more time and use myself as an example? Amen. Everybody don't start churches virtually. I know in this climate that we live in there, you see it a lot more, amen. But listen, th there's a whole lot of stuff that people probably looked at me and said, he doing this backwards. No, I'm doing this God's way. Amen, somebody. So, so, so let's, let's go a little bit further here. What, 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 what else am I waiting on, God? What else am I waiting on? God may have laid out the plan, but did we go through the people he designated or did we go through unauthorized people? Here it is again, y'all. God may have laid it out. And he said, I want you to go this way, and I want you to deal with these people. We may be wandering because we went through unauthorized people. God has not authorized everybody to be involved with what you're doing. While you're wandering, ask yourself, have I involved people that God didn't tell me to involve? You do realize that you can delay the promise by involving people that you weren't supposed to involve. I know plenty of places that are floundering now because they involve the wrong people. And God said it ain't going to never be right until you get from around them people. Amen. You might find yourself running to the wilderness. Can I help you again on this morning? Some people are supposed to be a part of your purpose. And some people are simply supposed to witness your purpose. I'll say it again. Some people are supposed to be a part of your purpose. But some people are only supposed to witness your purpose. Meaning that some people are supposed to be there to help you and go along the way with you. Some people are supposed to just watch it happen. Because God knows that if they get involved, things are going to go sideways. Amen. And so, so here it is. Let me, let me go a little bit further. What else are we waiting on? What else are we waiting on? Did we commit to the vision or did we alter the vision as you're wandering in your wilderness experience? Sometimes we didn't have enough faith to trust God when he said, step out. Sometimes we didn't have enough faith to trust what God laid out. Many times, y'all, we didn't have enough faith. Trust God. And he said, step out on faith. And we said, no, I, I need something more concrete. Lastly, y'all, what else we wait? No, did we alter our living to coincide with the directions of a holy God? I told you earlier that God says, be ye holy because I am holy. Amen. Once again, God's promises come with a standard. Amen. Has your living lined up with the promise on your life? God don't have to bless you quickly. God don't have to bless you anyhow while you go out here and live any kind of way. Again, check the children of Israel. Do your homework on it. Read from Exodus all the way up to the book of Deuteronomy. And how, dis, how, how disobedient they were. And how they spent so much time complaining. They showed no faith. They showed no trust in God. Even though we're talking about that, you got to have faith. Amen, amen. Lest I, lest I hold you too long, let me wrap this up on this morning. In our chosen passages of scripture today, we see two different perspectives as it relates to waiting on God. In Numbers 14, it deals with the people that have grown tired of waiting in the wilderness. Amen. We're dealing with a group of people that have said, I am tired of waiting on God. In the state of the world today, I told you in the open on today, in the state of the world today, where bombs are being flied, fly, flown around and hospitals are being bombed where children are, people are saying, I'm tired of waiting on God. 
they've decided that they would rather do other things than wait on God. These children of Israel, they said, we're tired of Moses. We're tired of Moses and we're tired of this God. Amen. It's the same God that brought them out. It's the same God that fed them in the midst of their complaining. The same God that had allowed spies to go over into the promised land so that they could see what God had waiting on them, if only they had endured. Despite everything that God had proven to be, they were all out of faith, so much so that they would rather die than wait another day for a proven God. Are you in that place on today? Where you're ready to throw in the towel. Where you say, I'm all out of faith, Pastor. I don't have no faith no more. God is dragging his feet. God is taking too long. I'm here to tell you, my brother and my sister, 100% of the bad days you've had up to this point, you have survived them because God was keeping you. I want you to keep God at the forefront. This is what they were saying in the book of Numbers. However, however, if you go to Psalms 27, we see a different demeanor in David. David starts off the 27th number of songs by declaring, the Lord is the light and uh, Lord is my light rather and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David declares that at the top of the psalm. Amen. That's faith, my brother and my sister. By the time we get to verse 13, amen, David is declaring that he is confident that he will see the goodness of God right here on this side of heaven. Amen. David is confident that he's going to see the goodness of God right here on this side of heaven. You don't have to die to see how good God is. You don't have to be at the funeral home to recognize the goodness of God. You don't have to be in the grave to recognize how good God is. David is saying right here in the land of the living, I'm going to see the goodness of, goodness of God. All he's got to do is wait on God. All he's got to do is keep serving God. All he's got to do is be patient in the wilderness. All he's got to do is let God have his way. All he's got to do is be of good courage. All he's got to do is have faith. God hasn't brought you this to this place to let you die. I'm almost done when I tell you this. God hasn't brought you this far just to let you die. You're better off comfortable with God than in bondage without God. Again, you're better off uncomfortable with God than in bondage without God. I told you not too long ago that in order to trust God, you've got to try God. A wilderness experience is a way for us to not only exercise our faith, but it's also a way for us to grow our faith. Let me share another excerpt from the book before we get out of here on today. God's promises to us are real, but we sometimes need to evaluate our commitment to God. There are times when we're more committed to the promise than we are to the God of the promise. Yet we want to go from point A to point B, but God may want to add a few more letters to the equation. Amen. God sometimes wants us to refocus on why we started out in the first place. So often we're in this wilderness state looking to God and asking what's the hold up. And in the meantime, God is looking down at us and he's asking the same question. There are times where God will slow progress because we're moving in the wrong direction. There are times when God will slow progress because we're moving in the right direction, but we keep st skipping steps. There are times where God will stop progress, amen, because we've stopped progressing. Are we waiting patiently in the wilderness or are we just trying to rush God, amen? As we're waiting patiently in the wilderness, we must also remember to wait faithfully. Amen. We must remember to never give up on God just because traffic has momentarily stopped. There's a plan. Amen. There's a path. Amen. And there is a purpose. But, but, but if you're not moving, amen, don't always assume that God has stopped working on your behalf. Sometimes we stop working on his behalf. Sometimes all you're waiting for is you. Can I help you a little bit further on this morning as we close this sermon out? Let us understand that every experience isn't a wilderness experience. I know sometimes these days we're a little bit overly sensitive and we blow things out of proportion that we always make it seem like the worst of the world is happening to us, amen. But everything that's happening to you, every moment of confusion, is not a wilderness experience, amen. Sometimes we're simply dealing with the ebbs and flows of life and we have to learn to see them through the lens that God has intended. Home isn't always necessarily the place that we started from as we talk about how do I make it home? How do I get back to the place that God has wanted me to be? Amen. Home isn't necessarily the place where you started from 
or even a place that you planned to be when you started the journey. I tell you, this child of God, home is wherever God intended for us to be. As we search for our own personal promised land, we must remember that finding our destination and seizing the destination are two entirely different things. Once the children of Israel got to the promised land, they still had to possess it. Amen. And even though God promised it to them, amen, it wasn't just handed over to them. I want to say that again right now. Even if God promises you something, that doesn't mean it's just going to be handed over to you. Amen. You're going to have to endure. You might even have to battle for it. But if it's promised to you, amen, God is going to make sure that you are victorious. As you go forward from whatever your wilderness experience may be, know that whatever God has promised to you, it will be. Even when you feel lost, even when you feel stuck, even when you feel under attack, even when you feel abused, amen, even when you just feel plain old unappreciated, amen, know that God is making a way out of no way. He has not brought you here to die, amen. He has brought you here to turn you into what he has purposed for your life, amen. God has taken this a long time with you, amen, my brothers and sisters. God has taken this a long time with you so that he can rid you of the chains of slavery that once held you back. A new destination, amen, requires a new creature in Christ. Elevation, amen, requires evolution, amen. And when we've already been in service to God, sometimes he takes us to new heights, amen, heights where our old skill set is no longer useful, and we must share that in order to be effective at the next level. What are you doing in your wilderness experience? Are you trusting God on today? Are you believing God on today? Are you throwing in the towel on God today? Are you in your prayer room, amen? Are you on your knees talking to God? Are you asking for endurance from God? What are you doing in your wilderness experience? Don't ask God what the holdup is. Do some self-check and find out from yourself, what is the holdup? Am I living? Am I living? Am I living according to what God has told me to do? Is God trying to get some stuff off of me? Am I holding on to what God's trying to get off of me? I'm telling you on today, my brother, my sister, let go of whatever God is telling you to let go of. You're in the wilderness experience for a reason and a season, but God won't leave you as long as you don't leave him. Stay with God, stick with God, and I guarantee you that you will make it to your promise. Here it is, y'all. And I'm done on today. I preached a little bit harder than I thought I was going to preach on today. We can't get there as we are. We can't get to our promise. I'm done. I'm done. We can't get to our promise as we are. This is what the wilderness is for. I've already told you that children of Israel got out of bondage in one night. That's all it takes for God to turn your situation around. But when he does that, you may have to sit you to the side for a little while. God may say, sit down here. You've been living that way for so long, and I need you to live another way. Oh, I got a promise waiting for you, but I don't want you to mess up the promise. So why don't you sit down with me for a while, and let's work on some things. How long are we going to be here? Well, well, that's really up to you, amen. That, that's really on how, how, how long you plan on resisting change on this morning. We can't get there as we are. The Christian life is about a transformed life. It's about a changed life. Transformation has to take place. David tells us in that psalm, he says he's going to see the goodness of the Lord right here in the land of the living. But I want you to know even that's not the end. There's another transformation that has to take place so that we can see the goodness of the Lord on the other side. There's got to be a transformation. We can't get there as we are must be transformed. We must be born again. Here it is, and I, I promise I'm done here, and I'm going to extend this invitation to you. So many of us have missed our promise because we're truly not born again. That's what we talk about in the book, Are We Still Making Disciples, the book that this church is based on. Many of us have not really been born again. We're church members. We ain't disciples. We ain't been born again. Jesus died on Calvary so that we don't have to die in our sin. Shed his innocent blood. The Bible, as I often tell you every week, nails in his hand, nails in his feet. They pierced my Savior in the side. He hung his head and he died. And he died for you and I. He died so we don't have to die in sin. The Bible says he didn't stay dead, though. 
Early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. You must be born again. Sometimes God has you in the wilderness so that he can transform you, change you out of your bondage clothes into some brand new clothes. But in order for you to stick it out, in order for you to hang in there, you got to have faith. Don't throw in the towel like them children of Israel did. Say, we, we quit. We give up on God. Because, listen, walking with God is uncomfortable. It's challenging sometimes. It's lonely sometimes. But this ain't the time for you to throw in your towel. This is where your faith should increase. I ain't got nobody else, God, and I need you more. But if you see it in the text, if you read up, and we'll talk about that wilderness experience, God fed him every day. Watch this. Even as they were complaining, he kept on feeding, kept on taking care of them. And they kept on questioning and doubting. But there were some people in the camp that had faith, and they endured long enough to see the promise. I'll tell you that one more thing there. Everybody ain't going to make it into your promise. Everybody ain't going to make it over into what God has promised you. I've already told you on today that some people are supposed to be a part of your purpose. Some people are just supposed to see it. And don't you be surprised, amen, when they say, I always knew you could do it, <laughs> amen, because that's what people do. Everybody loves a winner. But don't nobody want to be with you when you're practicing. Don't nobody want to be with you on the ground floor, amen. So you got to be careful who you put in key positions in your life because some people ain't supposed to be there. And as I also told you that sometimes we're in the wilderness longer than we should be because we have involved unauthorized people. God will tell you who's supposed to help you. And you got to trust him. Because sometimes them people don't look like what you thought they were going to look like. But you say, I trust you, God, in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise wherever you might be. I preach a little longer again this week. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. I hope that you got something out of this word on today. You got to have faith. Trust God in your wilderness experience. I want to extend this invitation to you all this morning, though. We'll make sure that we do that. And listen, as we tell you each and every week, I want to invite you to Jesus before we invite you to join a church. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if you confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he died on the cross, and that he rose on the third day, that you are saved. And so I want to invite you to Jesus on this morning. If you're not saved, I want to make sure that you're saved before anything else. Now, if you're ready to confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and you believe this to be the church for you, information is right across the bottom of the screen. You can, you can put it in the comment section if you want to. We'll receive you that way. But if you don't want to do that, give us a call, shoot us a text, shoot us an email. Lady Jackson and myself are ready to receive you into this community of faith. I tell you each week, don't wait for the building. We know in-person service is coming, but don't wait for the building. Don't wait for the building. Accept Jesus right now. The building is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Do it right now, as we used to say back in the day, while the blood is running warm in your veins. Accept Jesus on this morning. Amen. One more time, give God a hand clap of praise for his word. Let me give you these announcements so we can get out of here. I've kept you all long enough. Again, I pray that you all are blessed by the word on today. Um, listen, very quickly. Um, if you'd like to support us in your giving, in the ministry of giving, it's right across the bottom of your screen. Support us in the ministry of giving. Uh, you can do so via Givelify. Search out for the Kingdom Christian Church at Givelify. Again, you'll see my face there, Pastor Kelly Jackson. You can donate to us there. You can also donate to us via Cash App, dollar sign FTK Church. Again, dollar sign FTK Church if you would like to sow into this ministry in that way. Or you can mail uh, your seed into us for the Kingdom Christian Church. P.O. Box 230, East Point, Michigan, 48021. Again, for the Kingdom Christian Church, P.O. Box 230, East Point, Michigan, 48021. And as I always tell you, if you're local, uh, give me a call at the church number, shoot me a text, and I will come and pick up your donation. If you don't feel like doing any of those other things, I tell you, Pastor Jackson, don't mind driving, but however you want to bless us, we will be satisfied one more time we encourage you uh, meet us on tuesday for bible class tuesday at 7 p.m kingdom connection bible class 
on Zoom. Put us on your schedule, 7 p.m. We're usually no longer than an hour. We might go a little bit older, over if testimony get going, but we're usually in and out from about 7, 7.15 to 8, 8.15. Uh, we are in and out of Bible class, but we guarantee you that you will get a word. And so we encourage you again, uh, join us for Kingdom Connection Bible class on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Again, in-person service is coming. In-person service, first, third, first Sunday rather than April, April 3rd, 2022. In-person service at the East Point Palace, 21555 Gratiot Avenue at the corner of Topher, East Point, Michigan, 48021. Again, service times will still be the same. We want you to show up at 945 so that we can get started at 10 and we can get out on time. Amen. And also, last thing before we pray, we have another meet and greet Saturday, March 26, 2022 at that same address, 21555 Gratiot at the corner of Topher, East Point, Michigan, 48021. Again, we will have some dinners for sale as we are doing a fundraiser so that we can secure our own building. Again, all that information is on my page, on Lady Jackson's page, and even on the church page uh, about the dinners and everything so you can be a part of that. That's all the time that we've got for worship on today. Again, I pray that you all got something out of that word on today. You got to have faith and you got to trust God's timing even when you're in that wilderness space. Trust him. And I tell you all the time, you got to try him and you got to try him in order to trust him. And if you try him, you'll find out that he is trustworthy. He didn't bring you there to die. God didn't take you out of bondage to take you somewhere so you can die. He took you so you can be better when you get to the land of promise. But we can't just rush right into it because when you come out of bondage, you still got some stuff on you. You still got some ways and really that ways that you learn from your oppressor. Never mind the ways that you already had when you went into bondage. You done picked up some bad habits. God said, let's spend some time in the wilderness so we can get it together. So we can be together, so we can do it the right way. Trust God in the wilderness experience. Trust his timing. And I guarantee you that you'll come out better than you were when you went in. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, how we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for allowing us to share. We thank you for being in the midst of worship on today. We thank you, God, for even taking us to the wilderness, but not leaving us there to die. Give us the strength to endure. And even when we have questions, God, help us to accept your answer, God. Help us to always remain obedient. Help us to always remain trusting. And help us to always recognize that even when we think we're lost, even when we think we're struggling, you've been there right with us. And you've been keeping us the entire time because we can't keep ourselves, God. So right now, give us an appreciation for what you're doing for us what you have done for us, and what you're going to do for us. And we thank you right now for not leaving us wandering, but leading us to that promise that you had laid out for us even before the foundation of the world. We thank you right now. We thank you for promise. We thank you for purpose, God. And we thank you for loving us. Now may the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with his people now, henceforth, and forevermore, and all God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you as my prayer as always. We'll see you all on next week. Be blessed. Thank you for worshiping with us. Be sure to stay connected via Facebook and Instagram at FTK Church or YouTube for the Kingdom Christian Church. Support us through the Ministry of Giving at Givelify. Search for for the Kingdom Christian Church or Cash App, dollar sign FTK Church. You can give by mail or contact the church at For the Kingdom Christian Church, P.O. Box 230, East Point, Michigan 48021. Phone number 313 570 0782 or by email ftkchurch at gmail.com. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us at For the Kingdom Christian Church, where our mission is a commission.